You're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website culips.com. C U L I P S dot com. Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew. And I'm Suzanne. And you're listening to Culips. You are listening to Real Talk by Culips, and this is the series where we teach you the English expressions that you need to know for real world situations. And today, I'm joined by my trusty co-host Suzanne. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, guys. Hey, Andrew. <laughs> How's it going? I'm doing not so bad. How about you? I'm doing good. And today we're going to teach you how to report a lost item. That can happen to the best of us. And Andrew, I think you have a really fun story about the inspiration behind this topic. Yes, indeed, I do. And you know, we call this series "Real Talk" for a reason. It's because the situations that we look at in real talk actually occur in real life all of the time. And in fact, many of these episodes are based on my own personal life trying to navigate living abroad and living using my second language, which is Korean. And well, this last summer. Both my best friend and my brother came to visit me here in Korea, and they didn't come at the same time. In fact, they actually came about three months apart. And during both of their visits, we took a road trip down to the seaside city of Busan, which is nice. Korea's second biggest city. It's on the ocean. It's fabulous. It's a nice place. And oddly enough, when I was there with my best friend, he lost his wallet. And then when I visited with my brother, he lost his cell phone. And both of these incidents happened on the same street. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So when this happens, I kind of got stressed out because. Both my my best friends and my brother don't speak Korean, so it was my responsibility to try and find their items and talk to people and talk to the police and file a report and jump through all of these hoops, you know. Yeah. And doing this, I realized, you know, they don't teach you this situation in textbooks.、Um, so I thought it would be a good one for us to talk about here. How to handle a situation when you lose an item? So, how to make a report, or how to describe the item you lost? All of these things that you need to do when this happens to you. So that's what we'll do here today. Yeah. Did they find their stuff? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Actually, my friend found his wallet, and. It was actually a little bit annoying because、uh, after we left Busan, I went back to where I live, and he was flying back to a different country. And when he was at the airport, he texted me and was like, "Yo, Andrew, you'll never believe it! I just found my wallet in my backpack." No,、so、I was like, ah,、oh. I was talking to the police, filing reports. Talking to people that worked at the bank where he was using his ATM card, <laughs> doing all this stuff for him, and then he ended up finding it in his backpack. So I was a、oh, little yeah, yeah. peeved at that, but it's all right. At the good, at the end of the day, he still found it, so that was、mm -hmm. nice. In my brother's situation, actually, he lost his cell phone, but he. Knew where it was, and that was in the back seat of a cab.、Um, okay, 
and we couldn't call it because he didn't have a roaming plan. Right. He's out of his country. Yeah. And he had a Canada phone number. So obviously that's the first thing you would do, right? Right. Is just call the phone. But he had all his international roaming and stuff turned off because he didn't want to deal with any extra fees. So when I tried to call it, it just didn't work at all. Um, so we tried calling the taxi cab company and that didn't work. And actually it really sucked because uh, we had just gotten out of the taxi and were running, literally running to catch our train because we had to get back. <laughs> oh no. To, to where yeah. I, I live in Guangzhou. So, you know, I'm trying to do this. And then also we're really stressed about getting our train and, and navigating to the train station. So he told me, yo, bro, you know, just forget it. It's like a really old phone. I was thinking about getting a new one sometime soon. Anyways, this is just inspired me to do that. So. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so we never that's got good. his phone back, but yeah, it was an old phone and he was ready for an upgrade. But he did tell me that the trip back to Canada wasn't the most pleasant without a, a phone to kill time on at the airport. <laughs> totally. Listen to your podcasts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Speaking of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll get into it a little deeper here, Suzanne. Yeah. Uh, what is our plan for today? So today we're going to learn how to handle that kind of difficult situation of losing something, right? So what to mm -hmm. do when you lose something in English. Right. So first we're going to listen to a conversation where a man forgets his wallet in a taxi and then calls the taxi company, just like your brother, right, to mm -hmm. make a report about the lost item. Excellent. And then after we listen to the conversation, we'll take a look at it in more detail and break down some of the key language and vocabulary and expressions that we hear. Does that sound good? Sounds great. But just before we listen to that conversation, I do want to let all of the listeners know that we have a study guide for this episode. And we here at Culips think that the best way to study with us is with our study guide. And we design it to help you get the most out of each episode that we create. And in the study guide, you'll get a transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real life examples of how to use that vocabulary, a quiz, some prompts, and more. All of the details about how you can access the study guide are available on our website. So to learn all about it, just visit www.culips.com. Okay, so let's get started by listening to the conversation now. Hi, I was just riding in a cab downtown along 7th Avenue, and I realized that I forgot my wallet in the back seat. Oh no, that's too bad. Let's see if we can find it for you. Do you know who your driver was? No, I can't remember. You were traveling on 7th Avenue, you said. Yeah, that's right. And what does your wallet look like? Can you describe it for me? Uh, well, it's a brown leather wallet. Um, it's made by Fossil. And there's about $50 inside, plus all my bank cards and ID. Okay. So I'm going to put out an announcement to all the drivers in the area. And hopefully one of them will respond right away and we can return it to you shortly. If not, and a driver finds your wallet in his car at the end of the night, he will turn it in to the lost and found here at the office. In that case, you can come down here and pick it up. We'll give you a call and let you know either way. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Could I get your name and phone number? 
Sure. Chris Smith, and my number is 604-554-5555. Okay, we'll let you know. Okay, thanks again. Bye. So in this example, we heard a conversation between a person who just rode in a taxi and the taxi dispatcher. When he got out of the car, he realized that his wallet was missing. So he quickly called the taxi office to report his wallet as missing. And now we're going to take a closer look at the conversation and talk about some of the ways the taxi rider made this report. All right. Very good. So, Suzanne, when the taxi passenger called the taxi office to report his wallet as missing, he said mm -hmm. the exact sentence, I realized that I forgot my wallet in the back seat. Let's listen to this part of the conversation just a couple more times. And I realized that I forgot my wallet in the back seat. And I realized that I forgot my wallet in the back seat. Okay, and I think it's very natural for English speakers to report items as missing using these words that express a degree of uncertainty. Like I realized I forgot my wallet, or I think. I forgot my wallet, or I noticed I don't have my wallet anymore. Could you think of why we might do this? Yeah, because the wallet might have been stolen. It might have been lost in a different place. We're not totally sure where it went missing. So maybe we're going to say, I think I may have left my wallet in the car, or I realized... My wallet was missing when I got out of the cab. So this way, we're not blaming the cab company right away, but we are showing a degree of certainty that it happened within this time period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you never know, right? Like your wallet may have been yeah. stolen as you were hopping out of the car. Yeah, sure. I got my wallet stolen in the subway. Oh, no. I mean, and I didn't even realize it. I thought it was on the street, but I realized, no, it was, I think it was on the subway. Where was that? In Montreal or? No, that was oh, in New York. My. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. So the point here is that these style of sentences are very, very common in this situation. I realized I forgot my wallet. I noticed I forgot my wallet. I think I forgot my wallet. But in a more official context, like maybe if you're visiting the police station to file a report, you could say something like, I'd like to report a missing wallet. I'd like to report a missing cell phone like this. Yeah. And when you're making a, a sentence like this, you're leaving the possibility open that it may have been lost or it may have been stolen, right? You're just saying that your wallet's gone. I don't know what happened to it. Exactly. And yes, that's amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, I wanted to mention that in North America and maybe in other countries as well, I'm not really sure, but definitely in North America, most large public places will have a lost and found office, right? Yeah. And if you lose something, it's a good idea to go to that office to see if they have your item so that you could, you know, make a report to go and see if they have your item or if they don't, you could make a report and just let them know to be on the lookout for your missing item. So you know, places like shopping malls or universities or sports arenas, yeah. they'll all have a lost and found office. Yeah, and a lot of times when you go to those places, they will have you describe your item just to be sure mm -hmm. that they're giving the right item to the right person. So be mm -hmm. ready to explain your item in a specific way 
so that you can be reunited with your lost item. And Suzanne, you once told me a story about losing your iPad. Yeah. And you had to go report your iPad is missing. What happens to you then? So I was in Costco and my boyfriend put my iPad on top of some oranges and we <laughs> lost the iPad and I went to the lost and found and the gentleman didn't give it to me right away even though I described the object because everyone can describe an iPad. It's kind mm. of non-specific. So right. he asked me what the code was to open the iPad. He opened the iPad and said, put in your code. And I did, and it opened. And so he said, okay, good. you're, you're lucky we, we, we got it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that again. So in that case, the code made it a very specific uh you know, way that I can identify my personal iPad. Because, you know, there's a lot of dishonest people out there. And one thing that a guy that I used to know from university when I was doing my undergrad, what he would do is go to the uh, library, the campus library, and go to the lost and found office and say, I lost my computer charger. No way. And he would... <laughs> He would take a bunch of computer chargers and then go and sell them. He'd be like, yeah, you know, it's a black computer charger or it's an Apple computer charger. I forgot it when I was studying. So there's there's people out there like that guy that I knew in university. I wouldn't have called him a friend, but uh, he was oh, an acquaintance. Man. And there's people like that who will do these things. So you really need to know how to describe your item as specifically and as detailed as possible because if not they might be reluctant to give you the item in the case of chargers there's not a lot of detail that you can really give right so exactly people will you, just there's no code <laughs> yeah there's no code there's no unique features but definitely on a wallet or phone or a laptop there's some ways that you can identify it to Make it known that it's actually yours. Yeah. So Suzanne, just before we wrap it up here, I thought it would yeah. be fun if we role played and ad libbed a couple of situations. Okay. With a lost item. Okay. So I was thinking that I could be the person at the lost and found office okay. and you could be the loser. I can a be loser. the loser. Yeah, you're the loser. Okay, <laughs> and you, you lost your sunglasses. So okay. let's pretend that you are looking for your sunglasses, and you come to the lost and found office to do that. Okay. All right. Hello. Hi. Uh, I think I lost my sunglasses in the mall somewhere. Oh, no. Okay. Um, well, let me see if we have any. Could you tell me what they look like? They're Marc Jacobs. Okay. Uh, brown, like kind of tortoise shell. Hmm. Um, brownish, squarish, you know, lenses. They're kind of, they're not round or anything. They're rounded square. Okay. okay. Um, they have like a little silver button on the ends of of the arms okay well let me just go and take a look and i'll see if we have anything that fits that description thanks so much mm -hmm. you know i'm not actually seeing anything here we have a pair of oakley's but those are not them mm -hmm. obviously no all right could you just write down your contact information for me here and sure. if anybody turns them in i'll give you a call that's great thank you so much and i'll write down the description the glasses too Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. So that is exactly what this type of situation would sound like. I, I think that was really well done, Suzanne. We sounded completely natural <laughs> there. Don't you agree? <laughs> totally. Those are my actual sunglasses. So I <laughs> used my, my true experience. <laughs> Have you lost them before? No, no, actually, I didn't lose those. I, I'm good with sunglasses. Not so good with keys. 
Well, speaking of keys, I wanted to role play one last situation. And so let's talk about lost keys at a movie theater. Okay. And we'll switch roles this time. So now Suzanne, you are the lost and found office person and I am the loser. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't happened to have a, a set of keys turned into you lately have you I, hmm. I lost mine in the theater last night huh last night yeah um, i came to watch a movie last night and uh, i realized that i must have dropped my keys sometime sure. when i was watching the movie do, do you know which movie theater you were in or the movie you were watching and what time it was at yeah i was watching the green book at nine o'clock i i don't remember nine o'clock. what theater it was in though no I can look that up. That was in theater 14. Okay. okay. That's great. Um, and do you have any kind of identifying factors on your keys or any like spe- anything like that would make them stand out a little bit? Yeah, I keep them on a carabiner. It's a, an orange carabiner. And uh, okay. yeah, it's supposed to help me not lose my keys, but uh, obviously doesn't work very well. Yeah, that's like one of those clips when you go climbing, kind of. Yeah, exactly. One of those loop things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Is there a specific color? Uh, Yeah, it's orange and there's only two keys on the key ring. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let me go. Let me take a look in in the back for you. See if it was turned in. Sure. All right. You're in luck. Oh, yeah. Do these look like your keys? Those are them. Yeah, amazing. I'm so glad we could help you out. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, that about wraps it up for us today. Thank you for listening, as always. And one more time, I want to remind you about our website, qlips.com. It's an awesome website. It's got tons and tons of back episodes that you can listen to. And if you want to sign up and become a Qlips member and get access to our study guides, then that's the place that you can do that as well. Yes. And also, don't forget that we are on Facebook at facebook.com slash Qlips podcast. And you can get in touch with us uh, directly by emailing contact at Qlips.com. And also now on Instagram. So we're at instagram.com slash Qlips underscore English. Yeah, come check us out on Instagram. Give us a follow and uh, check out some of the cool pictures that we post up there. (laughs) Yeah, and videos. (laughs) And videos, yeah. All right, everyone, we'll be back soon with another brand new episode. So we'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.